The internet wasn't supposed to be like this. Hello everyone, my name is Frank and I'm glad you're here. So what do I mean when I say the internet wasn't supposed to be like this? I'm speaking of my experience around what I thought the internet would be and what it's actually become. In some ways it's become a wasteland of in disinformation, mindless entertainment, and while this is an overly pessimistic outlook, and let me be clear, I love the internet, and I think it's a great resource if, if you know where things are to be found, if you know where to look. Uh, what, and that's what this video is all about. This video is all about uh, finding good resources on the internet. Plus, a little mindless entertainment always works for me. But despite you know being a little bit negative about the disinformation on the internet, despite my rant, I remain generally optimistic that the internet is still the valuable tool that it was intended to be. So stay tuned. And in this video, I'll talk about how as learners and teachers, we can use the internet in a far better way. Uh, the way it potentially intended to be and the way where it can add huge value to our learning and to our lives. And I'll show you some places on the internet and how to use the internet in ways that many teachers, students, learners, people may not be aware of at all, or maybe just need a reminder about. So first, maybe a little bit of a history about myself and my you know, history with the internet in the early days. I've been teaching postgraduate programs for over 20 years, and part of that was because of my interest in technology. I was a very early adopter of the public internet. Back in the early 1990s, I used to read a magazine called The Whole Earth Review, which was a great magazine. It was a resource on self-sufficiency, technology, and ideas. And as a lifelong learner, it really hit all my buttons. Uh, combined with the material in other magazines like The Hacker Magazine 2600, the feeling was that the world was changing and that we were entering an era of free-flowing information and connectedness of ideas. So I started my online life by joining The Well, the Whole Earth Electronic Link, and it was really the first public node on the internet. Following that, I became involved in bulletin board BBS systems, like uh, we had a 64-line Galacticom system that acted as an early ISP for the area where I lived. Then the internet started changing. Uh, when the internet started becoming commercialized, we started to see how it moved from a collaborative platform for the free exchange of ideas and knowledge to a way of turning commerce into its digital form. Now, I don't want to be a crusty old guy talking about the good old days, but I sort of am. You know, the reality is that the fast growth and adoption of the internet into our daily lives wouldn't have even happened if it wasn't for the move that it took towards commerce and entertainment. I still remain nostalgic for the free flow of ideas. So a more sinister reality has actually happened with the internet and that's created us, uh, caused us to become confused. So we've become confused. There, there was an old saying, just because you read it in a book doesn't make it true. So just like the printing press gave people voice, the internet did that as well in a new way. But not all of those voices were or are truthful or even sincere. There's no governing body, there's no editors, there's no control over the internet, which is both its strength and its weakness. Anyone can say anything and present it as fact. Now, wait, wait a second, what's this channel all about? Is it, is it about internets and stuff? No, it's, it's not about ranting against the internet. It's about using technology to learn and teach more effectively. So let's talk about that. Over the past 20 plus years, when I ask students to research topics I'm finding more and more of the students turning towards the internet and doing searches to find the answers. Now, this is a bit of a concern because, the, because of the problems I talked about earlier. They need to be able to get good resources and not just any resource. So in this video, I want to show you a better way of using the internet, a better internet even. An internet that is hidden from most or rather just hiding in plain sight, but just unknown to most. So before I even begin, I do want to say that no source of information is useful without the ability to think critically. So critical thinking will always be the foundation of truth seekers and those wishing to understand the world. Now, what is this hidden internet? What am I talking about? Let's go have a look at how we can use the internet for effective research, where we can find effective and useful information on the internet, and how the connected network that spans the globe, the internet, actually does contain a lot of excellent information, but it's not as simple as doing a quick search. It takes a little bit more effort to find that quality piece of information, that quality bit of knowledge, but it is out there. Let's go have a look. 
If we're going to go out on the internet and look for good information, then we need to know where to look. A regular search on the internet is going to yield a number of advertisements. It's going to yield uh, links to social media, really try to engage us with that consumption of information. Uh, but we want to find specific information. We want to find research information, information from journals. Well, instead of going to google.com, why not go to scholar.google.com? This particular website will specifically search uh, various articles that are peer reviewed and really gives you a richer, more um, scientific, if you would, or more accurate research based set of results. So if I go in here and I look at something like data for education, I'm going to go in and when I go to data for education, you'll notice that I can find articles in here. There's quite a few articles in there. There's some academia websites in here. And I look through here, for example, data mining for education. That's actually a topic that I'm quite interested in, in terms of finding what's happening with students and doing some analysis there. And you'll notice that if I go in here, for example, to um, data mining for education, this particular PDF will come up. And I'll be able to actually, in many cases, go through and even read some of the abstracts or even read the entire article. If I go back, you can see I can sort by specific uh, articles. So let's say I want to look at everything since 2020. So I can start shaping the data that I'm seeing. I can sort by date. I can go in and even create an alert so that I'm notified of any new articles that come up. So this is a great area. I can even build my own personal library of articles in here. Now, in addition to Google, we can also go to our, I'll just bring up actually the Bing one first. So if I come up here, I can go to academic.microsoft.com. And with Microsoft Academic, I can go in, there's a number of articles and publications. You'll notice that I've logged in, I've created an account there. And you can create the account for free. You can also sign up if you are an academic researcher or if you do any type of research, you can put in uh, your um, identification there as well. And if I go underneath here and search for a topic, let's do data, whoop, data in education again. You'll notice that this also returns a number of articles in here. You can see where my topics are. I can choose a timeline in here. So let's say again, I'm going to go back and say, I only want from 2020 to 2021. So I can put a date range in there. And you can see here, I get a number of articles in there around these particular uh, areas. Let's say, for example, I'm really interested in data science or big data. I can start shaping again the result set that I get. But once again, I'm not getting advertisement. I'm not getting anything in here that's not academic, that hasn't gone through the peer review process of a journal. I can also specify, I really like the Microsoft one. I can look at specific journals. I can go in and look at institutions. I can even look at conferences. So there's a lot of really valuable uh, information that I can get just by going to academic.microsoft.com, signing into an account. And once again, you can generate a reading list. So I find this really happy, uh, ha happy. I'm happy that I found this, but I find this really helpful as well as making me happy. I, I find that what I can do is while I'm teaching, if I have a topic that I'm interested in, maybe the students spark something in my, in my mind, I can just quickly go in and do a search and put it into my reading pile for when I have my, my office time. So very, very handy there as well. So while Microsoft Academic and Google Scholar are fantastic open public uh, areas that we can go in order to locate academic journals, not all those academic journals are necessarily available as open documents. Some of them you have to have permission to go into. Well, if you go to your local library, so I'm just gonna go to the Calgary local library. They actually have access to a number of academic journals and peer reviewed journals. So if I go in here, I'll just go in and I'll go to the digital library. Now, the digital library is wonderful. We are very fortunate here in Calgary. We have one of the most beautiful actual physical libraries you can ever imagine, the central library. But underneath here, I go to my digital library and you'll notice that <clears throat> underneath, there's all sorts of cool uh, topics here, but you'll see that we can go in and we can look for academic journals. So you can explore by format if you hit academic journals. And let's go ahead and do my same search. We'll do data in education. And if I do a search on here, it'll generate the search for me. And if I scroll down, you'll see that I can go into Academic Search Premier. 
I also have my provincial Alberta research portal for mostly for history and ge uh, genealogy. Uh, so you'll see that depending on the subject in there, but I really want to go into the academic search. So I'll go into the academic search and notice that I can now uh, access the academic search premier for different journals, magazines, trade publications, you know, real substantial information here. So when I go in here, you'll notice it'll bring me to the the EBSCO host, EBSCO host, I don't know how to pronounce it. I just, I've seen the logo about a million times, but I can go in here and I can go and add, you know, my search data in education. And it's going to be very similar to what I got with Google Scholar and what I got with Microsoft Academic, except now I have a little bit more control here because I'll go in and let's just scroll this up to, we'll say everything from 2000 and 20, well, 2019. You can also just type this in there if you want, but it goes in there so you can you can actually type in the value here. I could just put in 2020, a lot easier than the slider, but I can go in here and I can say, just limit me to academic journals. So I'll just look for academic journals. So that's gonna now limit my search a little bit more. Um, I can go in and I can, again, go into things like, oh, I, I've got all results. I want just academic journals. And then, <clears throat> so you can see, it'll just pull the 44th, only a, a mere 44,000 <clears> articles for me to read. But if we go in here, you'll see that this, this one here gives me an abstract on it, gives me information about it. And you'll notice because I'm actually in a academic environment, I'm in the public library. If I go into the HTML of the full text, it'll actually grab that for me. I'll be able to go in, I can use all the different tools for citation, for exporting. So you can see I'm really getting really good quality information off the internet here. It's not just opinions, it's not just Wikipedia pages. I'm actually getting peer-reviewed journals, you know, by, by professionals and experts that are here that are able to <clears throat> give me information. I can read the abstract to see if it really meets my needs, if it's what I'm looking for. You can even, this is pretty cool, you can have it read to you in a number of different accents as well, which is kind of neat. So there's another way that I can make the internet, internet even more effective. Now, if I'm on the go, if I'm, let's say I'm traveling around and I'm on the go, well, let me show you another way that we can access these same articles, the same rich vein of information that we want to look at and and maybe while i'm on the go i just want to do some collecting of things that i'm going to read a little bit later on so here i am now on my ipad and if i go down <clears throat> there's an application called researcher and what researcher will allow me to do is go in and grab a number of different journals for example nature very popular journal there <clears throat> and this will give me abstracts and updates on everything that is happening for this journal. So you can see just 17 hours ago, there was the bright lights drew a plague of grasshoppers to since that's horrible. So Las Vegas got a whole bunch of grasshoppers, but you can see here that <clears throat> I'm able to go in, I'm able to look at different articles and we're able to see which ones might be of interest to me. So let's say, for example, I'm interested in this particular article. I'll just choose it for whatever reason. I'll grab that article there. And you can see here that this article here, um, I'm not going to be able to go in. I can read the abstract, but what I can do is I can copy this DOI number. And this DOI number is now copied to my clipboard. Now what I'll do is I'll collect this in my notes or something. And then what I can do is those notes will synchronize with my computer. So I can then go into those academic environments, such as the library, Google Scholar, or the Microsoft Academic, and I can put the DOI in there in order to retrieve this article. And most of the time I'll do that either through the library at the academic institution where I work, or I will do that at the, um, I will do that at the library. Now this one particular article here, you can see, I can actually read most of the article, right? So I can see a whole bunch of information here. Um, I can also <clears throat> mail it to myself. So if I want to follow up on this and read more about this, I can go in and I can just hit the, the mail icon and send it off to myself. I don't normally do that. I normally have another way of collecting it through a particular little program, a note-taking app that I have. But the, poor, the most important thing there is it's yet another way of making the internet more useful.
So there you are. I hope that was a very useful video for you and that you'll consider not just doing a regular search when you're out there looking for things, but actually going a little deeper and asking yourself, what am I looking at? What am I actually searching? Is this legitimate research? Is this legitimate information? And even more important than that, I hope that that's something that you instill in others, that you share this information with others and say, look, you can't just do a search to find information. You need to search the right places. You need to still have that critical thinking mindset to get the quality information that actually allows you to discover truth and to exchange ideas that are rational, truthful, and useful. Thank you so much for watching. Here are some other videos on the channel that you might be interested in. And as always, like, share, and comment down below on your thoughts 